know when you first come to a club and you're a bit apprehensive about things and you, like when I came from Leeds I'm thinking who am I going to be rooming with who's going to be mm. that when you came to Everton I'm thinking I don't want to get with Newley he's a bit boring I've heard yeah. so who did, who, did they, who did they put you with who were, who were your first room partner well, Martin Keogh must have had that. Oh, that uh, must have been interesting. <laughs> you and Martin. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, Martin had just signed, and, and it's one of those things that um, two new signings, they put you together. But we had a, if you remember, we had a, a three week trip to Japan, I do Malaysia, remember. and Thailand. Um, that was my first trip, my first pre season trip. And three, three weeks away in a room with somebody you don't know is a long time. I don't care who it is. <laughs> um, unfortunately for Martin, Martin wasn't in the side at the time. There was Dave Watson and Kevin Ratcliffe yeah. with a number one partnership. So that, that, that went into the season a few games and I, I was lucky enough to be playing and scoring. Martin was not really in the side. So you know I like the kit. Yeah, um, <laughs> and particularly before evening games. Well, Martin was on the phone to his wife, to his <laughs> estate agent, to his bank manager, back to his wife, back to the estate agent, and I'm tossing and turning. And I have to sleep before games. If it's a night game, I have to sleep in the afternoon game. So it was nothing really against Martin. <laughs> you just needed to get out. Of that I room. needed to get out of that room and get, and get another room. So I've, we were playing late in Orient in the League Cup. Uh, our first game in the cup um, away at Brisbane Road and I've gone into the dressing room and Terry Darakop was uh, was assistant wasn't he with uh, Mike Lyons to Colin and I've gone Terry I want to move I, I deliberately chose my way because <laughs> I'd, I'd been lucky enough scored a few goals had a good start and I went Terry I want to move and Terry just looked he at me he thought you wanted to move yeah, from heaven yeah <laughs> I said uh, please get me out that room I need some care <laughs> yeah Consider it done, Terry said. Consider it done. Yeah, and it was done. Unfortunately, I got Neville. That's what I'm going to say. Isn't it um, out of the frying pan into the fire. Well, Neville, big Neville, but, your next but, room partner. Well, an absolute legend. But you would not believe what a gentleman he was in the in the room. He used to often make me cups. Is is Everton's best goalkeeper ever? And a, an international offering to make me cups. <laughs> and and I have to say. Terry must have said he wants to sleep and all because Neville never slept. No, he never didn't. was up never. at the crack of dawn reading newspapers. And he'd go in the toilet. Neville would go in the toilet, get his newspaper and go in the toilet and read the newspapers and, and let me sleep. And yeah. there's like a, an international goalkeeper, the best world keeper class. in the world yeah. at the time. <laughs> Without a doubt. Yeah. So he done, he done me a favour, Terry. Let's put it that way. He done me a favour. But then how did it get from Nev? To one of the bo most boringest men in football, you room with Sheens. Sheedy. <laughs> oh, he's Sheedy. obviously our big pal of ours. Yeah, she well, Sheeds. I couldn't imagine rooming with Sheeds. He, he would really bore me. Sheeds ne probably never said a word to me for about 12 months, yeah. apart from good morning and whatever <laughs> he had to say on the pitch. He, he, was, he was one that took a long time to work people out, Kev. He would never force himself on you. Um, but he's very shrewd. He's a, he's a shrewd lad, and and that showed in in, in the way he played. Yeah. He'd see things very early. He'd mm. See things very early on the pitch, and he'd see things very early off the pitch. So I was always a bit nervous of him. Um, you know, you, you can't try and impress people or force yourself on people. But he, I don't know how I ended up rooming with him. The, the, the Ratcliffe Sheedy partnership. Yeah, that was that had been renowned, split up. Yeah. Had been split up. And the one thing, we were on a trip to Ireland, and the one thing he said to me when I got in the room with us was, don't forget to pop me in the middle of the night. Don't forget and to I, what? Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. Yeah. What's he said there? But I went, yeah, okay. But I'm gone out the room and I think, what did he say there? <laughs> and what he meant was, if I go out for a drink, if we go out for a drink later, which we did go out for a drink, yeah. um, sometimes I find a bit of a problem find in the toilet so <laughs> don't forget to pop me put me on the pot that's what he meant put me on the pot so and I found him going through the time. wardrobes oh. going through the wardrobes in the middle of the night and, Kev, Kev, and then I realised oh you I've meant, got to, I've, I've got got to put, put him, him on in the, the right direction yeah. <laughs> I always felt that you you, you were a, a player that you'd won in your, in, in your team the way you played you worked hard you closed defenders down uh, you were balls over the top you chased things down so you, you're one of them players that, as a player's player, you'd won in your team. 
there must have been some difficult opponents. Not not specifically hard, but good centre backs that you didn't relish playing against. I, I think. Or not relish. That, perhaps that's the wrong word because I think you relished every game yeah, you played in, and you yeah. wanted to you wanted to better that's this. Right, yeah. But there must have been some difficult opponents that you thought, I'm in for a tough afternoon here or a tough evening. Well. It was always very difficult because I, 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 although I could run and I could run all day and I wasn't, I wasn't slow, I wasn't quick, do you know what I mean? I wasn't electric and I, th I always feared playing against very, very quick players the likes of Des Walker. And having said that, I, I had a good record against, I, I don't know whether you, 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 when you play against the better players and the better teams, you lift your game yeah. a little bit. Yeah. I think that's natural in any yeah. sport. Yeah. When you're playing with the best or against the best, you, you, your performance lifts. And I didn't fear the likes of Tony Adams, who was one of the best at the time at Arsenal, and yeah. they, they were winning leagues and all this of it. I, I liked the physical side of it. There were, there were two hard lads who played for Oxford at the time, yeah. Shotton and Briggs, and they'd kick yeah. you all around the pitch. But if you keep if you keep coming back, they sort of respect you. Give you a bit of respect, yeah. yeah so he's a bit of a game lad, this one. That's right, yeah. yeah. And, and it's, it doesn't end up a fight, but y y y it's a challenge. That, that's what it is. But the likes of Des Walker, I have to say, in the whole career, and it was playing for Blackburn, and he was at the end of his career playing centre-half. John Wall played for most of his career in midfield for Ipswich, for Liverpool, for Scotland, and again for Ipswich. But he was playing centre-half. And he was the most frustrating player ever to play against because he read the game very well, mm. and he'd always give you that nudge at the at the right time or the wrong time. And, and when you get frustrated, sometimes you, you try and leave one on him. And I will tell you why he was an hard lad. Yeah. You get one yeah. back, you would get one back. And and it surprises people when you say who was the hardest. Definitely John Walk for me when I was playing really? for Blackburn. You John, have thought that, would you? Well, and not in his natural position. No, not in his natural position. But very, very difficult. But then, um, out of them top players, I, I thought we had some great players yeah. uh, at the time. Who were the one you were impressed most by? Take Neville away from it because yeah. I, I thought we had great international class players, oh. but I thought he was world well, class. I think, so I think, who were the I don't think that? Evan he was underrated, but I think. In, in football in general, Graham Sharp, yeah. one of the, certainly one of the best, and, I, and I've been lucky, I've played with some good centre forwards, and, and for me, Sharp, he, what he did, there was nobody could do it as well. A, a target man, mm. a target man got his fair share of goals, but team, he let, teams were allowed, Everton played through him. Mm. And whoever played up front alongside him, whether it be Adrian Heath or Andy Gray or whoever it was, I reckon, and you'd have to ask the people who were picking the side at the time, which is Howard, he would be the first fella in that, that centre forward yeah. position. I know, I know playing at right back, when I went at right back or centre back, if you were in trouble and you were under pressure, yeah. you could just knock it yeah. long and he'd win it. He, you he could was, drop it into his feet, he'd control yeah, it, and bring yeah, it. Yeah, he Well, a great finisher as well. When, yeah. you, when we seen him in training, you know, he could finish with either foot, he could edit, he was brave. Uh, he wasn't the biggest lad. People, no. people think yeah. Graham was a, was a big lad, but he had a great spring on him. Um, but he was, a, he was a tough lad, a proper hard lad. And um, I mean, d d don't get me wrong, Sheedy, Sheedy had a left foot to, to yeah. die for. And when you when you make a run and they see it... You know and it's going to come. Yeah, because you know, sometimes you, you make runs and you're playing with, in teams or they, they just don't see it. Mm. But when I said to you before about Kev being head of the game, Kev would yeah. drop it on sixpence from 40, 50 yards. Mm. And, and, and he'd, he'd knock great balls into the box and... Hit it with the right pace. If it, it was banged into your feet, he'd hit it with the right pace, or allow it you to play a first time. Do you know what I mean? It, yeah. The, yeah. It, it, we've all played with them, them yeah. type of people, but Graham was the one. I think he was definitely not underrated at Everton, but I think in the game in general, I think he was the one that was very, very underrated.